Hey everybody, it's Kira with Polymer Clay TV and I'm so excited to share with you our new hair slide cutters. So what these do is they create a nice shape, nice and symmetrical, with holes already in the right spot for you to be able to create a fold over hair slide and then you just take a hair stick and put it through the holes. I'll show you what that looks like in the end. So to do these, I'm gonna play with our moon cutter and the wide oval. And I've got some texture sheets. This is our best-selling Quilted in the West. Everybody loves this one. It's got a really fun boho pattern. And this one is Snails in the Garden. It's a hand-drawn floral and spiral type of pattern. And these are just the right size for the hair slide. So to do the moon, I'm gonna do sort of a floral blue moon and I have some Sculpey um, Souffle Igloo color here that I chopped off my big block. And this is Souffle Lagoon. I'm gonna mix them together. So to get the blending process started, you're gonna to want to roll your clay thin enough that it can fit through your pasta machine. This is hair courtesy of my cat who can't seem to stay out of everything. Um, and we're gonna mix them together and roll them flat enough that it's a sheet that can go through the pasta machine without damaging the rollers. So you never wanna take a giant chunk of clay unless you have one of the big um, Lucy clay rollers that is meant for taking a chunk of clay straight out of the package. But I have an Atlas 180 and I don't wanna ruin it by doing that. So just get it started and I'll be back with the blend. Here I wanna show you something really cool that happens with polymer clay. So this is my blend not completed, right? I've got, haven't gone all the way and made it into one color and I love it. I love how it looks because the lagoon color has kind of shattered and fractured on the white and I'm gonna leave it this way and use it. So I've got a number one with, or zero on my Atlas 180 is the thickest setting and that's what I'm gonna use and we're gonna go ahead and roll out this stamp. So for that, I'm gonna use a roller. And with stamps, I like to kind of press in a couple areas and I don't know what you'd wanna call this. It's kind of like getting it started because as you roll over a stamp, if it moves, it'll create a double impression. So I like to be kind of careful at this point and get it started before I press the stamp design into the clay. I find that if I just go like back and forth from top to bottom really fast without getting it started gently first, that my clay will slip away from the stamp and it will create that double impression, which is not what I want. So there's my stamped impression. And before doing anything else with it, I'm just gonna take away these extra edges save them for another project, and then use my tool here to pick this up off the tile. This unglazed tile is a little sticky to the clay, so I'm gonna just stretch that out just a little because I feel like it, and get a nice area here to cut the moon. So you've got a lot of space to play with. You can pitch, pick whichever part you want. And I'm going to go ahead and use a press. I like to use an acrylic block with my 3D printed cutters. They are plastic after all and I don't want to break them. So I like to distribute the pressure, especially over where those little holes are. And you'll notice that I engineered these holes, let's come in closer, so that you could use a poking tool in the end to get the clay out because the clay may want to get stuck in that little area. And look at that, I've got a spot right here that would be perfect to make an earring or something, so I'm going to put that to the side and hold on to it. All right, excitement because I did not get my clay stuck in the hole, it stuck to the table instead. Cool. 
All right, so now your challenge is, do you wanna do any more decorating to this? Of course I do. I would like to highlight the design area with maybe some silver. Yeah, that'll be good. Okay, so you can use your mica powders and whatnot to do this. You can use ink, whatever you want to use. I happen to really love using sparkly things and powders, so my micas are always going to come out for this type of thing. And you can see that the design is nice and high, so it's really taking the powder nicely. And then you can decide, do you want to put a border on it? Do you want to give it a frame? Do you want to do anything else before we go on to the next step? I think I'm going to stick with simple for this one because my aim here is really to show you how to use the hair slide feature. So I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to show you what to bake it on. All right, so I like Arizona teas that come in these big... Um, cans and I also like my Starbucks so oops so I have a couple of these cans now the Arizona one does not have this feature this I had taken um, some epoxy sculpt which is two part sculpting medium and stuck it right onto the bottom of the can so that it would stand up and not roll over but for this project it might be a little heavy for something like this I usually do cuff bracelets on here so Instead, I'm going to go ahead and take my bead baking rack, which is made of aluminum, and that's an exclusive here at Create Along. We designed this, um, redesigned it from the original poly tools to be better, and it's bakeable and great. It disperses the heat, so I'm going to put my can right in it. I'm going to lift my moon off of my table and I'm going to lay it over this so that I get a curve. Now you don't have to, but since this is gonna go over like a bun in someone's hair, I am going to curve it gently now so that it wants to curve on the hair. Now let's go ahead and make the other one. I'm going to grab the Racing Green Souffle, which is another newish color and I'm gonna do something fun with it. So we'll chop off a bit of that. And on my work surface, I have a scrap. And I believe this is the white granite mixed with probably some other stuff, but mostly white granite. And I really love this color. I love all the granite colors. Like here's another lump of Sculpey granite in the gray color sitting on my desk because I love them so much. The turquoise granite is another favorite. I don't know why. I just like the mottled kind of earthy look to it. So I'm gonna make an earthy green granite by putting this racing green in with my scrap of white. Now the reason I really love souffle for this project is because after baking, your souffle is very flexible. If you go back in the Polymer Clay TV YouTube archives, you'll find when it first came out, I did a test and it bends really nicely and then it comes all the way back to where it started. So it's perfect for a project like this because different people have different thicknesses of hair and stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and blend this together and I'll be back. I can't help myself with this shattering effect. Look at how pretty that would be if you wanted to make, say, some leaf jewelry. You could do this on purpose and shatter the souffle over Primo and this is what you get if you stop mixing now. I'm gonna mix this all the way because I do wanna see my fun boho pattern really show up. So I'll be back. 
All right, here's our color. Basically just has some speckles in it and it's been lightened. And we're gonna go ahead and put our stamp down. Same deal, kind of get it started in a couple places. We do make these rubber stamps right here in our workshop at Create Along. If there's a pattern that you wish we had, send me an email and let me know. Because I'm very open to requests right now. All right, let's see what this Quilted in the West stamp looks like. So cool, love it. Let's cut off the extra. We'll have that as scrap for something fun later. And for this, we're gonna use the wide. I've got two styles in the oval. I've got a wide one and a thin one. I'm gonna use the wide one for this. And because this pattern is kind of line based, I'm gonna go ahead and cut right across it. So there's our second one and the scrap thing that's great about polymer clay is that you can always use your scrap. So for this one, let's do something fun and maybe this light gold color across that area. This is a palette of micas that you can also find in our shop. Let me know if you like them because I have several colors that I can carry. And I really love these because they are pressed palettes as opposed to powdered pigments which can kind of fly around and get everywhere. I like how I can pick up a little of this and move it around with my finger. All right, so you get the idea. If you wanna get into a tight spot, they do come with a little applicator. So I would like to do these little triangles here in this red oxidized kind of a color. So I'm gonna go in with the applicator to do those because my finger is too big to concentrate on that spot. And even maybe go down the line here because there's a nice raised line on that design area. There's no way I could get it with my finger. I was kind of globbing onto the other areas. So, Very cool. All right, and then what did I not use yet? I don't have a lot of this copper, so let's go in on the edges here with some of the copper color. This line right here. And next you're gonna ask me, do I need to seal this? And Generally speaking, I press this on pretty hard and I don't really have any issues with needing to seal things like this. You can if you want to, but of course when you seal mica, you're gonna lose some of that play between the matte clay and the shiny mica. So that's up to you. If you're selling them, you might wanna seal them. 
Um, people are going to put this in their hair, but see, the hair is going to be on the inside, not the outside, which is why I'm not going to worry about sealing mine, because the hair is not going to be rubbing on it. All right, let's get this one onto our baking can, just right next to the other one. Drape it over. So it's basically just going to bake with a bit of a bend. As it gets hot, it's going to drape nicely onto the can and stay there. And then when it comes out, it will have a memory for this bend. And uh, this little guy, if you're wondering what that is, this was made with one of our new paper bead cutters. So I haven't had a chance to bake it yet. I'm just going to let it go into the oven with these and we'll be back. Here we are out of the oven. And all you need to do now is just pop these off of the curved item that you baked them on. In my case, that's the can. So we'll move this over. And then you'll need to find yourself some hair sticks. So I found these on Amazon. I'm thinking about carrying them, so drop me a comment if you would love for me to find some really great hair sticks to carry in the shop at Create Along. Otherwise, you can go find some of your own and they're ready to go. Just slide the stick through the already pre-made holes and look at that. If you bake on a can, it's gonna have a nice back. And this one, because of the blend, even has like a really cool looking back. So this is ready to go in my hair. And as I said, this type of clay is very flexible and strong, so it will open up to go over the hair and then it's, it's very durable. So no worries about this falling apart or getting messed up as long as you're using a good professional brand of clay, that would be Primo um, by Sculpey or Souffle by Sculpey or a mix of them together or Kato is another strong and flexible one, Cernet as well, Fimo Professional. These are all clays that you can use to make a nice, solid, strong hair bar. Have fun creating!